Log in. Kevin! Okay. Barb! 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 Let's do... Okay, we're doing health and science. You already did back to school. Go back. Mm. Let's do scroll up. Scroll up. Let's do. That one. Chippy. Leave me alone. Say back. What is it, Toby? Uh, Dear Tim and Moby, how come my older brother is always so grumpy? What's going on? Signed, Sam. Well, he's probably just going through adolescence. That's the part of our lives when we transform from kids into adults. It all begins with puberty, a series of physical changes. Puberty can begin as early as 8 and as late as 14. Your body begins releasing chemicals called hormones, which trigger changes throughout the body. In boys, a hormone called testosterone leads to a deepened voice, bigger muscles, and facial hair. Girls produce estrogen, which makes their period start, and leads to the growth of breasts and hips. Both boys and girls start growing hair on their legs, underarms, and um, downstairs. Puberty makes both boys and girls grow bigger and taller. But that's not all. During adolescence, your brain changes too. You develop more control over your impulses because you use better judgment and reasoning. But the hormones flooding your body also intensify. Hey. Hey. Chippy! <laughs> you got a, a mischievous look on your face. Yeah. I don't know yet. Let me call you when I leave. Um, um, okay. I'll be leaving in a minute. stop. Okay. Bye. Okay, Aiden. Let's do... No, we really don't have it. Don't talk about music. What about music? Arts and music. Want to do famous... Ooh, musicians. Let's do, look, come here. You want to do the Beatles, Elvis. Pick somebody. Who you want to do? You want to do the Beatles? Okay. I don't even think I was born when the Beatles. All right, let's take it from the top. And a one, and a two, and a three. <laughs> wow, that's terrible. Who programmed you guys to play music anyway? Oh, right. Maybe we should um, answer a letter instead. Dear Tim and Moby, my dad listens to an old band called The Beatles. Can you tell me a bit about them? From Sophia. <coughs> Thanks for writing in, Sophia. To answer your question, the Beatles were the most popular rock and roll band of the 1960s and one of the most popular of all time. They released dozens of number one singles and many hugely successful albums, too. But before they got big, they were just kids from Liverpool, a working-class city in the north of England. The core of the band consisted of a teenage rebel this named John Lennon and two of his friends, Paul McCartney and George Harrison. 
They weren't trained musicians. In fact, they couldn't even read music. But they loved to play classic American rock and roll by artists like Chuck Berry, Little Richard, and Carl Perkins. They also performed original numbers that Lennon and McCartney wrote themselves. Well, at first, the Beatles were pretty rough around the edges. But they improved dramatically after playing shows in Germany over the course of two years. The hours and hours they spent on stage together turned them into the best band on the Liverpool scene. To reach a wider audience, they traded their tough leather outfits for tailored suits and ties, got new mop-top hairdos, and signed with a record company. Right, before they started recording, they needed a new drummer. So they picked a friend named Ringo Starr, who was the top percussionist in Liverpool. Once all the pieces were in place, the Fab Four became Britain's most popular rock and roll act almost overnight. Lennon and McCartney wrote hit singles like Please Please Me and She Loves You, and the band's first album stayed at number one for 30 weeks. By 1963, Beatlemania was in full swing. Thousands of teenagers crammed their shows, screaming so loud the band couldn't hear itself play. Yep, the next stop was the United States. It was a risky move because British bands had never been successful in America. But in February 1964, 73 million Americans watched the Beatles perform on a TV program called The Ed Sullivan Show. It was a huge moment in the history of rock and roll. It also kickstarted a new musical era called the British Invasion. All of a sudden, American teenagers couldn't get enough of English groups like the Rolling Stones, the Animals, and the Kinks. And American bands began imitating the Beatles' tight vocal harmonies and guitar-driven sound. Well, the Beatles just kept getting bigger and bigger. They sold millions of records, made two successful movies, and played huge shows in gigantic arenas all around the world. They were also maturing as artists. On albums like Rubber Soul and Revolver, Lennon and McCartney were writing more thoughtful, interesting songs. And the band was experimenting with sounds that couldn't be reproduced on stage. So, in 1966, the Beatles announced that they'd stop performing live and devote their time to making new records. It was another risky move, but it paid off in June 1967 when they released an album called Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. In addition to straight-up rock and roll, there were songs with full orchestras, songs that sounded like pop hits from the 1940s, and songs that incorporated traditional music from India. The album was full of new recording techniques and sound effects, and even the cover was arty and unique. Both critics and the public hailed it as a masterpiece. Well, 1967 was the height of the hippie era. Peace, love, and flower power were everywhere, and young people were opening their minds to new ideas and experiences. It seemed like Sgt. Pepper tapped directly into the spirit of the times. Actually, the album was sort of a high point for the Beatles. They continued making great music, but as time went on, the band drifted apart. John Lennon married an artist named Yoko Ono and became less interested in working with the other Beatles. George Harrison complained that his songs weren't making it onto albums, and Ringo quit the band for a few weeks in 1968. With all this bickering, it came as no surprise when the Beatles announced they were breaking up in April 1970. But they left behind a musical legacy that continues to influence other artists to this day. Anyway, that's the Beatles' story. Now, let's take it from the top. And one, and two, and three. Oh, forget it. Okay, we're gonna do the quiz. I don't know if either one of us is gonna be any good at it, but we're gonna see. You ready? What? term best describes the Beatles before they spent time playing in Germany. Squeaky clean, boring, untalented, unpolished. Which one? B. B? Which one? A, B, C, or D? C. B. A. D. What 
what can you infer about the Beatles' earliest record? A. You think it's A? B. Uh, okay, good job. B. Besides their roles as musicians, how else did John Lennon and Paul McCartney contribute to the Beatles' success? Which one? A, B, C, or D? Look at it. Hey. Which one? C. Okay. Place the following events in sequence. A, the Beatles release Sgt. Pepper. A, B, C. Beatlemania sweeps into the UK. The Beatles B. appear on the Ed Sullivan Show. B. You, so you say it's B C A A B C which one? B C A. B C A. Okay, let's see if that's right. Oh, you was right. Okay, one more. What effect did the Beatles' appearance on the Ed Sullivan have on rock and roll in general? D C. <coughs> you did this one before. How were the how were rubber rubber soul and revolver albums different from the be, be, uh, the Beatles previous output? Which one? They contacted much longer songs than their ER albums. Okay, nope, that's not right. Be, be they where he that only in retreat freedom. During what de decade did the Beatles' popularity peak? The 1950s, the 1960s, the 1970s, the 1980s. Which one you think? You wasn't even born. You said the 1970s. I was born in the 70s. I mean, you were wrong. Me, 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 me. A or B? <laughs> B. Good job. With songs that included full orchestras and songs based on traditional Indian music, Sgt. Pepper was truly an eclectic mix of styles. What is the best synonym for eclectic? Strange or diverse? Which one? Jaden. Good job. Aiden Baden. Which of the following is an opinion about the Beatles? Sgt. Pepper was the most important album of the 1960s. None of the Beatles knew how to read music. Millions of people watched the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show. The Beatles starred in some highly successful movies. Which one is opinion? A. Why did the Beatles break up? Choose the best answer. D. C. B. You got four out of ten. All done. All done. That's for you. <laughs> I am done. Uh, no, we're not done. We're done with this one. I think we did pretty good. You don't think we did pretty good? Even though we don't know nothing about the Beatles. So, let's do L. Oh, no. I found another one. Aiden, I can help you with this one. Come on. 